if something seems either too good to be true or just kind of something they would not say, there's a good chance maybe they didn't say it. My name's Henry Ida. I'm an expert on deep fakes, generative AI and synthetic media. Uh, I've been working in this space, mapping the landscape for the last uh, six and a bit years. So deep fakes and AI have evolved pretty astonishingly quickly over the last 18 months. Um, and while I've seen a lot of this content and I've investigated a lot of this content, I'm not a formally trained digital forensic expert. That is an actual academic discipline um, involving a lot of very sophisticated techniques um, using computer science effectively to try and figure out what is authentic and what is not. Um, and so whilst I can point to signs that look suspicious um, or, or in the case of some of these which are clearly fake kind of point to some of the things that I'm, I'm very confident in, um, there are also going to be many cases where I would not feel confident kind of giving definitive answers precisely because the technology is moving so fast that some of the signs I might see today may not necessarily be reliable signs moving forward. So in that sense, there is no kind of fixed golden rule about how you can spot a deep fake or how you can spot AI generated content. Because if you're watching this in a year from now, or even in six months, the landscape will have changed a lot. Obviously knew about the investigation into Jimmy Savile, um, but I, I, I thought at that time that, that there simply wasn't the evidence, as some, the, the testimony simply wasn't compelling. So this video of Keir Starmer um, is an interesting one because the voice is very good. Um, one of the elements that potentially was a bit of a giveaway to me was the resonance of the voice relating to the room that it looks like he's in wasn't much in the way of echo or kind of natural reverb on the voice. And also the formation of the sentences were, you know, convincing on one level, but also a little bit jolted. The other thing to note is that the video is of a very low quality. It looks like it's been compressed or it's sort of a low resolution. And that's often a technique that's used to try and hide some of the imperfections that might have occurred, for example, in a face swap or, um, or, for example, the manipulation of mouth movements to match a new audio track that's been generated. Um, and in this video, um, the face in particular is incredibly glitchy, um, or at least there's a lot of what we call visual artifacting, where you kind of can see the pixels and so on. But it still appears that the mouth movements haven't been particularly well rendered relating to the audio. The other factor is that the comments he's making, and this is a theme throughout all deepfakes is if something seems either too good to be true or just kind of something they would not say there's a good chance maybe they didn't say it you know people might be surprised to hear me say this but i actually like ron desantis a lot yeah i know i'd say he's just the kind of guy this country needs and i really mean that and i can't think of anything more important than that hail hydra i mean i think the the thing that set alarm bells ringing for me with that was this hail hydra at the end of the video right so this is a video which the way it's been presented in this person's tweet or x or whatever you want to call it um if you listen to it in its entirety um it gives away that it's fake and on that level you could argue okay this person is creating kind of either some kind of political satire or they're, they're kind of um, sort of messing with the audience, so to speak. The problem is that last second or two could be quite easily cropped out or edited. Um, the video could be shortened effectively to not include it. And then suddenly that key piece of kind of context for certain audiences um, disappears. I think some of the clues that I picked up on in this video were really about the mouth movements which really did not match the audio um, in the clip. But also, again, this similar issue that you get when, when you're trying to generate voice audio, particularly using text-to-speech, so typing in the words you want the voice to say, you sometimes have issues with the kind of natural flow of how someone would speak. And whilst the video has a pretty good, um, has a pretty good almost um, cadence, there are certain points where there is a pause and her body language mirrors that pause. The actual way that the sentences flow is um, is not particularly convincing. 
the the kind of takeaway message I'd really want to give to your audience again is, um, you know, have some almost humility about your ability to spot this kind of content. 